This is P.J. Tucker, University of Texas alum, current small forward, power forward for the Houston Rockets, and for the past few years, the reigning sneakerhead champion of the NBA. P.J. Tucker might have the largest collection among NBA players, but his rabid infatuation is indicative of the rising popularity of sneaker culture, both on and off the court. In 2018, the global sneakers market stood at a reported $58 billion, and estimated compound annual growth rates expect the industry to reach $88 billion by 2024. So, how did we get to this point? We have to go all the way back to 1917, when the Converse Rubber Shoe Company launched their first basketball shoe, the All-Star. It was the first mass-produced basketball shoe in North America, consisting of a thick rubber sole and an ankle-covering canvas. And it was the shoe of choice for semi-professional basketball player Charles Hollis Taylor. Taylor believed in the shoe so much that after he retired from basketball, he went to work for Converse as a salesman. He helped redesign the shoe to provide enhanced flexibility and support, and had the idea to add a patch to protect the shoe's ankle. He even became the player coach for the Converse All-Stars, the company's industrial basketball team. Throughout his career with Converse, Taylor traveled across the country hosting basketball clinics and promoting the All-Star shoe. He slowly became an icon in the sport of basketball. People would go into stores asking for Chuck Taylor's shoe instead of the Converse All-Stars. So in a brilliant marketing and branding move, Converse eventually added Taylor's signature to the design on the ankle in 1932. The first signature shoe, but not the last. In 1971, Adidas dropped the Adidas Jabbar, named for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, in 1973, Puma dropped the Puma Clyde, named for Clyde Frazier. In 1976, Converse dropped the Dr. J's Pro Leather, named for Julius Irving. And in 1984, Nike was hoping to partner with the rookie rising star Michael Jordan. But Jordan didn't want to partner with Nike, he wanted to partner with Converse, the shoe he wore while in college at North Carolina. Converse was still a widely popular shoe for NBA players at the time, worn by superstars like Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. But Nike laid out a plan that other brands couldn't offer. A huge contract, worth more than three times the richest contract at that point, creative input that would customize the shoe around Jordan's wants and desires, and a marketing push unlike anything that had ever come before it. What emerged was this, the Air Jordan. The shoe came in a number of colorways, but when fans think of the Air Jordan 1, they usually picture the band colorway. They're called banned because the story goes that Jordan was fined $5,000 per game that he wore them because they broke league uniform rules. On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. Now, Michael, is this the shoe? Now, you, of course, we can't show what kind of shoe this is. That's okay. The color stands for. But is this the shoe that the NBA wouldn't let you wear? Yeah. What's wrong with the coloring? They, uh, what, what, what rule do we violate here? Well, it doesn't have any white in it. Uh huh. <laughs> well, well, neither does the NBA. NBA policy mandated that each player must wear shoes that not only match their uniforms but match the shoes worn by their teammates. It's true that Jordan wore red and black sneakers, and it's also true that the NBA front office sent Nike a letter about the shoes, but the actual truth has basically been forgotten over time, as if the public preferred the legend over legitimacy. The shoes in question were actually airships, and Jordan wore them only once as promotion for the eventual Air Jordans, since they had a similar design, and since the actual Air Jordans wouldn't be ready for months. There's no confirmation of any subsequent violations or fines, but it didn't matter at that point. The buzz had already been generated, and Nike ran with it all the way to the bank. It's widely believed that modern sneaker culture really began in 1985 with the Air Jordan 1s. The style, the marketing, the controversy created a level of demand never before seen for a sneaker. Not only did Jordan quickly emerge as one of the most exciting players in the league, he did it while wearing shoes that looked like nothing else on the court. The modern sneaker landscape is flooded with choices. Signature sneakers are more common than ever, with seemingly every big star having their own line of shoes. And multiple brands are competing for eyeballs. With so many choices, the decision for sneakerheads now boils down to the factors that mean the most for them. How it fits and functions, the material, the structural stability, the silhouette, colorways, technology. Whether it's meant for performance on the court or athleisure off the court. But perhaps the most important aspect of sneakers today is the unique story that they tell. The shoes you wear say a lot about you, who you are, where you've been, and what you believe in. 
Elizabeth Semelhack, curator for the Out of the Box, The Rise of Sneaker Culture exhibit says, the cultural meaning behind sneakers is a constantly evolving dialogue between the people who produce sneakers and the people who wear them. Sneakers have signified everything from national identity, race and class, to masculinity and criminality. Put simply, they are magnets for social and political meaning, intended or otherwise, in a way that sets them apart from other types of footwear. In the modern sneaker culture, shoes perform well based on the story surrounding their release. That's the reason why people choose to remember the Air Jordan 1s as the band shoe. It's a better story. Players today are layering in a variety of stories into their shoe, which give insight into their background, hobbies, and inspirations. For example, the Nike LeBron 15s Equality Edition had a huge impact that was larger than the game of basketball. With the growing interest in sneaker culture amongst players and the fans coincided with Nike's 2017 takeover as the official manufacturer of league uniforms, the NBA made a rule change to the dress code before the 2018-19 season. This change removed color restrictions that previously limited regular season on-court footwear to combinations of black, white, gray, or team colors. It's given the players a voice on their stage that they didn't always have. And with the floodgates finally open, the players have certainly embraced the opportunity, sporting unique kicks on a nightly basis. We made the change to provide our teams and players with a vehicle to showcase their individuality as well as their passion for basketball footwear. Sneaker culture isn't new, but it's definitely evolved throughout the years from Chuck Taylor to Michael Jordan and beyond. This video was brought to you by Squarespace. If you didn't already know, you can use Squarespace to build beautiful custom websites for anything you might need. Maybe you're trying to promote your business, create a portfolio, or maybe you're trying to sell some of your hard to find sneakers to the world. Whatever it is, Squarespace will help you do it. They have gorgeous ready-made templates to pick from, and it's really easy to build on top of them. You can simply drag and drop photos, link your social media accounts, and much, much more with just a few clicks. Squarespace will even help you find your domain address without having to hassle with third-party domains. So go ahead and go to squarespace.com slash theelk right now for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, make sure you use my code theelk in order to get 10% off your first purchase. Thanks everyone for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, share it with a friend, and leave me a comment below. Tell me what's your go-to sneaker of choice. Mine are definitely the Converse All-Stars. I wear them almost every day. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe and click the bell below so that way you don't miss any new videos whenever they drop. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.